It is the floating voice of Simon Miller here taking a risk and hoping that there is some more interest to watching this if you have me basically doing a director's commentary over the top. Could go utterly badly, and if so, you let me know. Gonna be quiet here because... That's why somebody shouted my catchphrase and therefore I want to be really arrogant about it. I'm only joking, of course. A couple of weeks ago, I had the quite frankly ridiculous opportunity to take on David Starr in a professional wrestling match. I don't think I need to tell you who David Starr is, so I won't bother. I should be watched this because you know who he is. You like, oh my gosh, Miller took on him, crazy. Now, I have never had such an education in professional wrestling in my entire life. Even here, you can see his... His just sort of unplanned character work is, 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 is excellent. It just is. He knows exactly what to do. And he pissed me off here because he did slap me on my head. And as we know, I only slapped my own head. So I decided to chuck him around the ring. Not going to lie. I quite, in, I quite enjoyed it. And I quite enjoyed the reaction it got. Look at me getting all fired up at the world. But no, I just wanted to, like I say, thank you very much to the person that recorded to this uh, on their phone and sent it to me. I just wanted to kind of show out there. Now, by no stretch of the imagination do I think I'm in a position where I'd call myself a good professional wrestler. I think I've come a long way over the last few months. This hurt, right? Into, look at that. Guardrail, never nice. I think I've come a long way over the last few months, but... The main thing was this one, is when you're in the ring with somebody like David Starr, it's a real eye-opener into, you know, how good you can actually be. I mean, this was absolutely the hardest match I've ever had, like getting my jaw smashed in there, which is no good for my job because I need to be able to talk. You get more confident the more matches you do just because you get more used to surroundings. The same as everything. You play a violin more, you get better at violin, you know, you play football, whatever, sport. It's a, it's a natural thing that just happens as long as you apply yourself and as long as you have the focus and the motivation. Also, I was proud of that kick out as well. I threw him right out of the ring. And then we have a moment where we just stare at each other. I thought it was cool. You know, everyone always says, as you would have heard this before if you're a big pro wrestling fan, when you get into the ring with somebody who is far above your level, and David Starr is, I would say, one of the top independent talents in the world. Again, like I said, you were saying, like, okay, man, I got to get back to training. I got to get better at this. I got to get better at that. It's, it's, it's almost mind boggling how far apart two, two people can be. And obviously he's been doing this for years. I've been doing this for you know barely any time whatsoever in terms of wrestling. And here again, I thought I'd throw him around again, but this time I was like, I won't throw you, I won't beal you as they call it. I'm just gonna lob you, <laughs> lob you into the turnbuckle over and over again. I don't know what I'm laughing. He's about to absolutely kick my ass. A little spoiler there for you. <laughs> Quite proud of this as well. Catch someone out midair, give him a sidewalk slam. That's right, you son of a gun. But yeah, it's, 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 it's fascinating. Like, this happened to me when I first debuted back at the 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 Defiant Rumble. Falcon Arrow. Uh, <laughs> what weird commentary is this? But this happened to me when I first debuted in Defiant Wrestling, and they I was told just to go to Doug, like do your thing, and then go to Doug. And I was like, what do I do when I get to Doug? And they don't just go to Doug. And I went to Doug Williams, obviously, is an absolute legend of the UK scene, and I just couldn't believe. Again, you could instantly you just knew that this guy knew what he was doing. Of course he did. That's why he's got the status that he has. And I kind of had that again with David Starr. I was like, you know, the way that he approached the matches, the way that he is in a match, every little thing that he does. And I'm really happy I got the opportunity and I really hope I get more. But again, like I say, it was just Simon. It's now time to almost hit like phase two. This killed, by the way, if you're interested. That really, really, really hurts. So all these idiots go, resting is fake. Oh, yeah? Well, that guy just stamped on my arm. And I don't see, you can't, you can't fake that. You don't learn that in wrestling school. This is how you get stamped on by somebody's arm. But the other, situ the other thing that I took away from this mainly is that, uh, I mean, there's a strike right there. I've been working on my strike so much recently because, I mean, in any kind of modern day professional wrestling, strikes are important and they're still not exactly where they need to be. And I was able to get some incredible feedback from very nice people that I won't name just in case. But it was, um, it's just, it's just, people are so nice. This was a shame. I wanted to choke slam David Starr's ass and instead he just, he's working on my arm the entire time. But dad, there you go. Goldberg, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere in Georgia, wherever the hell he lives nowadays, he knew what was going on. I know this commentary is really rambly, by the way, but I literally am watching, trying to give you some context and everything else. That killed too. Imagine, imagine being picked up and then having your head slammed into David Starr's knee. 
but I wasn't. I wasn't going to go down that easy. I had a bit, bit more left in me. But yeah, I was glad this happened. I was. Glad, I, I certainly wasn't getting carried away. I never get carried away. Also, I was proud of this backslide as well, in case you're interested. What? Uh, but yeah, I never get carried away, and I understand how early on it is in my career and how much I've got to do. And I certainly wasn't, you know, thinking otherwise. But it was just good to get a reminder that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Professional wrestling takes a long ass time to get good at, and you've got to respect it, and you've got to respect your opponents. But namely, I guess I just wanted to say that it was out almost, you know, I've been watching David Starr for a long time as a wrestling fan and to get to a position where I actually got to share a ring with him. Again, I got schooled. There's no two ways about it. He absolutely owned me and that's fine. You know, I had, I had my moments, but I never even thought these kind of things were possible. So I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know what else is on the agenda. I know that I'm booked, obviously, for the rest of 2019. And if I remember, I'll be sure to put my dates in the... Uh, in the description below, boom, look at that. Just rain making my ass. One, two, three, and that's that. But no, I'll be sure to put the, the dates there, and if not, remind me, and I'll get them in there. But, yeah, it's just... Who knew that professional wrestling had so many facets to it? Who knew that it had so much depth? And who knew that we'd even get to this place to begin with? Because I certainly didn't. And like I say, it really opens the door into what's down the line and I'm sure if you've watched any of my vlogs when I talk about my wrestling you know that I do want to make a proper go of this and I am taking it seriously I learned recently there is still this reaction out there that oh the YouTuber wants to be a wrestler which I'm so past now I don't even care like surely in your own life you're allowed to do more than one thing imagine you ever just I mean lots of people focus on a singular thing and that's fine but I love the stuff I do on YouTube I love my what culture work I love doing this I love all these opportunities come up, but I want to work professional wrestling into that as well. I don't take it lightly. I don't disrespect it. I understand my place. I understand, again, I go to training. I do all of these things, but hey-ho, some people's minds, you're just not going to be able to change. I had somebody on Twitter say it to me the other day, and they were a professional wrestler. And fair play, they copied me in. They wrote out Simon of 316, so they didn't hide away from it. But I just wanted to go to them, do not do anything else then. And I don't mean, so even if you play a game, like you can't do that, you're a professional wrestler. Like we're human beings and we should be able to test ourselves and put ourselves out there. And hopefully that's what I'm doing. Hopefully every time somebody comes and sees me, they realize that I've got a little bit better. And if I haven't, hopefully it's on me. It's my onus to know that I didn't achieve that. And therefore I need to go back to the drawing board. And I'll absolutely do that as well. Because that's the, the every, you, have, you always have to have little goals with these things and, you know, targets that you set for yourself. And right now, mine is for people to come down if they watch me. And, and I have had this a few times. Sort of the biggest compliment I can get, taking what we just said and twisting it a bit is, oh, I just thought because you were the YouTube guy, you'd be quite crap. But actually, I can see what you're doing there. I'm like, excellent. That's what I want. Um, it's, and I'm never going to stop doing the YouTube stuff. And right now, I mean, you know, fingers crossed, put everything together. I'm never going to stop doing the, the wrestling stuff as well. I think they almost go hand in hand for me now and how I'm enjoying things. But yes, going back to the original point of this, getting to have that match with David Starr is another one of those things that I will hold on to for a while. I learned a lot. I've been educated. I've been schooled. The bar continues to rise, but that's good. The further the bar goes up, it just gives you something to chase. As long as I can kind of hopefully keep up with that, all, all will be well. So, yeah, that was that that was the deal. Again, let me know in the comments below whether you just rather watch the match or originally I was just going to put the match up. Quick tangent. I was just going to put the match up, but I was like, well, what's more engaging? I don't know. Usually you're used to watching a wrestling match and having commentary. I'm not going to sit there and do commentary of my match because that would just be too strange. But I thought maybe some context, like I said, director's uh, commentary, as they say. Yeah, it's not a wrestling commentary, but director's commentary may actually have helped the situation, but you'll have to you'll have to let me know. From this point on, though, we go through the rest of the year. Uh, I'm here, there, and everywhere, and hopefully every time I'll be able to pit myself against these people that have far more experience and far more quality and far more talent than where I am right now, but it means when I come out the other side and sit back and think about it and process all these things, I can be like, okay, I can now utilize all this information, apply it to my work, and that's already happening. Like Even my moveset, something as simple as that has expanded, and that was something I was struggling with is I don't feel like I have enough moves and it's because I was overthinking it and I was thinking well I'm this guy so I shouldn't do this move and really it's about where you do the moves as opposed to what moves you do all these things start going into your head especially when you do watch WWE AEW or independent wrestlers that are good you can see how they formulate and put together matches and sometimes you're like that's crazy even when you know when I watch my match back obviously I'm very focused on what I'm doing as anybody would be I'm hypercritical of myself too but actually when you watch a normal match 
not a normal one, but one where you're not involved, there are some things you don't see because your attention naturally and subconsciously is drawn somewhere else. So if you are focused on one thing 100% of the time, of course you're going to see things that look a bit weird, but that's not a natural way to watch anything. So all these little things come together to kind of, you know, boost you up and hopefully keep you on the right track. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I, I know there's going to be some matches in the future that I suck at. That's life. You know, ups and downs, ha, 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 funny, funny. But that is life. You can't be good 100% of the time. If you could, it wouldn't be fun anyway. But much like this, David Starr, give me an absolute scorning. If I can draw stuff away from it and ensure that it means I continue on the right path and I get better, then it can only be a good thing. I will stop waffling now. Please leave a comment below again. Like the commentary stuff. Don't like it. Hopefully when I get more matches and I keep putting them up. Uh, again, I'll go with what you want, right? Because it's there to entertain you at the end of the day. Like the video. Share the video. Uh, please subscribe, like below the channel, I say that all the time, even when those numbers go up by 10 in a day, I think, all right, we're heading to that 100k, which is another big thing that we want to get to. And also, all of my personal content is supported by patreon.com forward slash assignment of 316, link in the description below, but that's how I'm able to dedicate as much as time as I can to my YouTube channel, it means I can turn stuff down uh, elsewhere. And as it is a wrestling video, simonmiller.bigcartel.com. That's where you can buy all my merchandise. I've got a wide t-shirt, a slaphead t-shirt, a couple of 8x10s, and hopefully going to have even more options up there soon. Because I get it, people like options. You want to open those stores and be inundated with choice. So keep an eye on it. But mainly, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. I know there's going to be some comments. Millie, you're crap. Millie, you did this. I get it. I know. But hopefully the next video you see, you may have 10 things you can criticize me on. But the next one, you've only got nine. And then eight, then seven, and six, and so on, and so forth. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.